Okay, so we want the set to intersect both branches of this hyperbola x y equals one and the hyperbola x y equals negative one. Now the set has to be constant. It has to there has to be at least one point on each branch of the parabola, this definition of intersect. And it has to be convex. And so the smallest possible convex set containing f any given set of points is just the convex hole. Does this mean that a set has to be a quadrilateral if it's minimal? I think it does, because if it doesn't, then you could just pick any of the intersection points that it does have on one intersection point on each of the four branches, and then take the convex hole, and that would be strictly contained within. Yeah, so the minimal is, so it's a good partial order here. So we've already reduced it to basically it's a quadrilateral. And so basically, is there a good expression for the area of this quadrilateral? I don't want to do any calculus yet. Is there some sort of coordinate transformation that would make this easier? Uh, so if, if we draw the diagonals, does that help? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, well, the origin is pretty important here. So it's the center of symmetry of the four branches. So if we specify kind of just the angles, so I know that each of these four lines has to be in its own quadrant, respectively, because that's the entire branch of the hyperbola lies in that area. So basically, we can just uniquely specify an angle from 0 to 90 degrees for each of these, and that would uniquely determine the quadrilateral. So can I get an easy expression for the area of the quadrilateral in terms of these angles? Yes or no? <clears throat> well... Is the polar form of a hyperbola easy to write down? R squared sine theta sine cosine theta equals 1. Uh, can I get a good expression for this in terms of theta? Well, it's cosine of 2. So what if I just specify the deviation from the center then? Uh, well, I know that this is 1 half sine of 2 theta. Yeah, and sine of 2 theta looks like this, where this is pi over 2. So if I specify the deviation from here that's just going to be like that. So basically I get r is equal to the square root of 1 over, if I shift this by the cosine of 2 theta, where I define my theta to be the deviation from the 45 degree line, and then similarly for the other ones. Does that help? See, I'm not sure. I know the area of the triangle formula in terms of these two radii and uh, angle between them. So actually, I want to minimize the area of the convex. I feel like the minimum area is going to be a square, just because it always is in these kinds of situations. Again, I'm not entirely sure if that's the case. It's a good proof of that. Okay, well, say we fix three of the points already. What's the minimum area of the fourth point? I don't know if it's easier or harder. Well, essentially, it suffices to minimize the area of these two triangles, and so we're minimizing this kind of thing, which I don't think is very fruitful. Okay, well, what's the deal with the hyperbolas? Why are they hyperbolas? Does it have anything to do with anything that we want? Hmm. Okay, so what do we have so far? We've reduced it to finding the area of the minimal quadrilateral with one vertex on each of these four branches. Okay. Yes, we have definitely have that. Okay, so just need to come up with a rigorous argument that shows it's square. I, so I believe the answer is a square. And then, okay, if it is a square, then what would the actual answer be? Uh, in that case, we would have negative 1. So the, the area would be 4, yeah. So I want to show the area is at least 4. So basically, we want to show the minimal quadrilateral level is a square. Can we use something like Pick's theorem, like or the shoelace formula? Um, uh, 
what's the area of a triangle in terms of no, I thought it was just the determinant of the So if I know AB is 1, does that simplify anything? So I know the area is 1 half the determinant of this, and that's just going to be BC minus ACD over 2, and then we know that A times B is 1 and C times D is 1. Does that help at all? Well, if we We write this as c over a, and we write this as a over c. Does that make sense? Hmm. Does that make sense? Okay, and of course we're going to have absolute value on this. In that case, we're just adding up the absolute values of each of these. And hmm. If you go back to this, does this help? So we essentially want to minimize the area here. So the radius of this here is that. Uh, I don't think that immediately helps. Is there a way to kind of extend, geometrically extend this so we get an easier shape to calculate? Is the square a minimal area? Well, we could try simpler shapes. Let's say we try a rectangle here. Uh, if the height of the half the height of the rectangle, say, call it y, then this is one over y, and so the rectangle has constant. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a square. Yeah, because this will have the same area. So the yeah, it doesn't have to be a square. Okay, we we're trying to prove something that's not right. Um, does it even have to be a rectangle? Maybe they all have the same area. Does that even make sense? No, it doesn't make sense because you could just rotate the square and then it would have a large area here. Yeah, okay. Does it just show that no, no quadrilateral can have an area smaller than four? How do we show that? Inequality would be good to use here. Uh, let's call the points x1, y1, so xk, yk for 1 through 4. And by shoelace, what do we have? x1, y2, x2, y3, x3, y4, x4, y1. So we have cyclic sum x1, x2 y2, and then subtract cyclic sum x1, x2, y1 over 2, absolute. That's the area of the shape, yeah? Yeah. Right, race. Can we show this is greater than 4? Uh, if we... What kind of manipulations can we do on this sum? Well, this is cyclic sum x1, y2 minus x2, y1. x1 over x2 minus x2 over x1. And I just click sum this. Wait, that's going to be 0, isn't it? No, no, no. No, it's not. 
Do you put the absolute value inside or outside? I forget. Does it even matter? I'll go with this for now. Uh, so basically we want to minimize this. We can assume with a loss of generality that they're positive. If I call this R, this is basically R minus one over R. Um, if I graph that, it looks like that. Which definitely could be negative if I make R small enough. So I'm basically sure the answer is for just how do I prove this? See, the trouble is the area of the quadrilateral. Do we have a good expression for the area? So what are the ways that we could calculate the area of the quadrilateral? We could break it up into triangles like we did here. I know this is a Bamagupta's formula, but I don't want to use that. Uh, what does area represent physically? Is there a... Dynamical, Newtonian approach, this kind of thing. If we move both of these down, so a rectangle here, and a really long rectangle here. Okay, this is zero, uh, this is CY2, this is Y1. Just doing an example to see what would go on. This is 2 over Y1, this is 2 over Y2. And the height would be y1 plus y2, and the average base would be 1 over y1 plus 1 over y2. The area would be this. What's the minimum value of this? Well, we can use Cauchy Schwartz, I think. Possibly. Yeah, we use Cauchy Schwartz on vectors with the square root of y1 and the square root of 1 over y1. And then this would be length, length, and this would be, have to be at least the dot product, which is going to be 2. Was the area at least two? Does it even make sense? Height times base. Height. So essentially the average base, yes. And so I get length squared times length squared, and then I get one over so hmm, the area is at least two, really? If I put in one, 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 I get four. Did he mess up the Cauchy Schwartz? Okay, let me write this out in full. Our vectors are root y1 and root y2. And our other vector is root 1 over root y1, 1 over root y2. And then the length of this vector is, oh, the square root of this. Okay, so this is at least 2, so the area is at least 4. Okay, so that confirms, I guess, in this trapezoidal case. See, okay, so that, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I'm recently sure the answer is at least four. Can we show that we can, given the non rectangular shape, kind of just minimize the area by moving one of the points closer? I feel like that'd be hard to say or different other people, yeah. So I just don't want to deal with the sum of angles. Although I might have to just just deal with some of the angles. <clears throat> Let's see how bad it is if we deal with some of the angles. So, let me draw my picture more carefully. Here's the 45 degree lines. Here's the theta 1. And uh, see, I have another thing, theta 2. Oh, sorry, this is theta 2. And then 
here's a horizontal vertical lines, here's a parabola, this is a point on the this point on the quadrilateral, and this is a point on the quadrilateral. I want to find the expression for the area of this triangle. Well, I know the radius of this is just going to be 1 over, oh, it's going to be root secant of 2 theta 1, and then part the other one is going to be secant 2 theta 2, and this is going to be 1 half, and then I multiply by the sine of the angle between them, which is going to be pi over 2 minus, I should really have these be directed counterclockwise or something like that, okay, sine of the difference between the angles really does that even make a difference because this is going to be symmetrical okay this is basically just the cosine of the difference between the angles so the area of this triangle is just so what is it well it's proportional to and this all that matters for minimization the secant 2 theta 1 secant 2 theta 2 product square root and then cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2. And I want to show that this is at least 1 half, really? Does that make sense? Oh, can we just look at the triangle instead of the quadrilateral? Uh, does the area... So all we need... To, so if we take two adjacent branches of the hyperbola, we have an origin triangle with one vertex of the origin and other points on these two branches. Is the area of this triangle at least one? Yeah, we can just reduce it to that. Is this true or false? Well, if we go this way, it will go out, and then it will expand. Yeah, it's inversely proportional, so that makes sense. So I believe this is actually the case. Yeah, I think this is true. If we just show this, we're done. Is there a good way to show this? Uh, let's see. Well, what if I... Hmm. What's a good expression for the area of this triangle? What if I take another copy of the triangle and flip it over? Does that help at all? I don't think it does. Uh, I guess it's time to boot for us. This is x1, this is x2. Um, actually, I'll, I'll call this negative x2 because I want both of it to be positive. Height on this side. The area of the triangle is proportional to the determinant, so it's going to be coordinate here is going to be x1, comma 1 over x1. Coordinate here is going to be negative x2, comma. Actually, I'll have x2 be negative 1 over x2. Wait, no, I'll have x2 be positive, and then this is a negative x coordinate, but the y coordinate is positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the area of the triangle is proportional to this. And we want to minimize this. We want to show that this is, uh, well, the area of the triangle is 1 half. So we want to show that this is at least 2. How do we do that? We Well, we get x1 over x2 plus x2 over x1. And we want to show that this is at least 2, but this is an easy application of whatever that theorem was. I'm pretty sure it's like AMGM or something. But anyway, we have this ratio. We have R plus 1 over R is at least 2. Oh yeah, I see it now. This is definitely going to be positive. So I chose both of these to be positive. This ratio is going to be positive. Therefore, we can write R equals e to the y. Yeah, and we get e to the y plus e to the negative y is at least 2. Well, this is clearly true just from the graph. It's concave up. And uh, the minimum is here. You could probably show using some fancier argument. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. This is well known, so I think we're done.